Evening, guys. Hey, I'm going to share some stuff with you. Uh, kind of was sort of a dream, some of the stuff I got in prayer, combination of things. It was a couple of weeks ago that I got this message, and I just couldn't get it out there. I wanted to, but it just never seemed to formulate. But really, the reality of it is, guys, of the hour that we're living in, and the reason why I titled it the way I titled it was because it's time to rise and shine, guys. And put prayer first. Because we really need his direction to win, fight these battles. We put way too much emphasis on the natural. Guys, right now, everybody's all... it's. There's stuff that's been idolized from viruses to the presidency to all kinds of stuff, guys. And we're not getting clarity and direction because of the misdirection from the enemy. It's not, I'm not just talking about social media, guys. The main, the main culprit of this is, is the enemy of our souls to deflect our attention, to get us off the mark of the high calling, to get us to not see clearly. So what I'm saying is wake up and pray up, not wake up and smell the coffee, not awake church, not all this hokey pokey stuff that's being portrayed and just, man, guys, it's a, the gospel is very simple. It's not complicated, even the Bible. It's deep. And as you get closer and closer to God, you get more and more depth. You got to want it first. So I got some scriptures to go with this. They were in prayer. And this was the scriptures. And I'm going to just be brief um, on this message and end with how I got a lot of these several years ago. <laughs> Lord spoke to me and he said, it's in Jeremiah 3.16, Isaiah 3.16, and Joshua 3.16. It's a message for this hour, this time, but it's about direction and praying up. Because guys, face it, if we don't, we're in trouble. Because we're getting misdirected, misled, misguided. I know, of course, I'm not talking about just in the political realm. That's so natural. We've eagle, eagle, we've idolized the presidency, guys. Honestly, maybe some of the reason why it didn't transpire the way it was because there was a lot of egos involved in it too. There's a lot to it, guys. Okay, way more than we're seeing direction now we don't know where it's going to land yes of course the world wants us to think that it's all settled and just go on about our business and you know our life not when it's all about them taking them lives mostly really honestly i'll just be brutally honest with you guys all these people that are speaking about so adamantly about an abortion this is a little brutal guys and i'm sorry I'll, I will repent, if need be, which I may. But how many of those people are glad that their parents chose abortion versus life? None of them, guys. If they, re you know, they'll, they'll mock you or laugh you out if you said that to them. Of course. But in the reality of it, if they really thought about it, they'd be appalled. But there's the deception going on, guys, and we're not and we're not gonna get clarity of the spirit of the Holy Ghost unless you're praying and seeking him with all your heart. I'm not talking about some canned prayer. I'm not talking about praying because you want a new car. I'm not talking about praying for you to pray. I've done it. I'll be, just to be honest with ourselves, guys. I'm talking about weeping and praying between the porch and the altar. Really getting a hold of God 
And there's a main reason why he told me this over a year ago about getting America to pray as a nation at five in the morning. Because the clarity of the hour. And at five in the morning, it's pretty quiet, guys. At least at my house. The dog is the only thing up. Me and the dog, generally. My wife gets, she used to get up all the time real early and it used to be the opposite. Now it's me. <laughs> but, so, you know, five, six o'clock is pretty quiet. Sometimes it's a lot earlier. But read those scriptures, guys. And this is how I got them. It was, it's a message I got about I had a dream. And in this dream, the Lord said, Colossians 3.16 was just as important as John 3.16. And I woke up, and I went, man, I ran and got my Bible, guys. Like, I didn't know what Colossians 3.16 said. One, I'm old and, you know, this just doesn't work like it used to. Plus, I never really used to remember the scriptures anyhow. I never had that good of a memory. So, I ran and got it. Read it. It's on one of my messages, guys. Colossians 3.16 is just as important as John 3.16. It's about two or three. It's almost three-year-old message. <clears throat> but, so... Just, just get the get the message and watch it because it'll it'll add some clarity to what I'm saying. But I'm gonna end with this. Read Revelations three sixteen. So guys, we can't just take this lightly anymore. It's time to pray up. Get up and pray up because. If we don't, like I said in one of my posts recently on Facebook, it was about the Vietnam vets, but it's still about the church, too. God, we can't even stand up and say, no, I'm not wearing a mask, let alone bark about that we're not going to take the mark of the beast. Come on. Let's get real here. Real, 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 real. Time to wake up, guys. But wake up to pray up. Not to smell the coffee. Not to wake up church. All this, man, it's a bunch of ego, sensationalized garbage by itself, honestly. God just wants you raw, the real deal. And that's why. At that 5 a.m. prayer, quiet, peaceful, no distractions. None of this YouTube garbage, Facebook garbage, self, none of this, nothing. Unless you pick it up and start looking and bleeping and texting and just... No, lay it down. Get a hold of God, Jesus, the Holy Ghost, and his word. We're not going to get this from the church from the building we go to, from the pastor, from anybody else, from YouTube, anybody else. We're going to get this straight from God. That's how he wants it, guys. That's what he wants. All of us, each of us, me included. This is not finger-pointing message. You pray and I don't. Business. <clears throat> it's time to be real, guys. Real Christians, real men and women of God, really seek Him and weep between the porch and the altar. Because we are in perilous times, guys, except for His children. But we're not going to get the answers we need the way we've been getting them. This road rage stuff on Facebook and YouTube and all this other, you know, it's sensational. I mean, there's so much garbage, guys, going on even in the church, even in amongst the Christi Christianity, even amongst Christian people. Every corner you turn on, there's some kind of deceptive thing going on. I mean, I've people, Christian people, so we're supposed Christians bark at me about Christian nationalism and all kinds of junk. And it's like, man, I don't even know what they're talking about, honestly. Yeah, th there was a, you know, look at those nuts that 
that entered into the Capitol, what they're wearing and stuff. You know, does that represent Christianity? I don't think so. Not even close. There were some good people that went there, and I know some of them, that went there to pray, seek God for some clarity. That's what we're supposed to do. That was the point. Not that other nonsense. And then the world took a, took, took a one thing that a few goofballs took off with and tried to rubber stamp all of us as Christians that, that were all like that. Man, that Kool-Aid must taste pretty good. <laughs> the deception, guys, is out there and we're not going to get the clarity we need unless, if, unless we're getting it from above. Love you guys. Read those scriptures. Some of them are warnings, a little bit. Revelations is definitely a warning. But some of them are just to encourage you to seek Him. While He yet may be found, weep between the porch and the altar, guys. For your family, for yourselves, for your loved ones, for this country, for the world. Man, so they get, so they get their eyes out of out of their behind from this coronavirus for one. It's a good start. For the political man too, that's another good start. So many deceptive things going on, guys, to get us off seeking him, reading your Bible, understanding his word, understanding his direction. And you're not gonna get it with a mealy mouse prayer. I've done it. I've been I've gone to God before thinking I was praying. I was really complaining or thinking I was praying. It's really because I wanted something. Come on, guys. I'm talking about the real deal, the real ones. You know exactly what I'm saying. We've all, you know, had some guilt in it. And if you haven't, you just didn't, can't admit it, you're lying. Sorry. <laughs> oh. You want to hear from God? Get rid of some of your theology and try a little neology. Love you guys. Talk to you soon. Um, let's just pray. I'll see you tomorrow, five in the morning. Kidding, sort of, but not really. You won't see me. I'll be in my house. I'm in Dallas, and it's cold, cold as heck out down here right now. And I was born and raised in Minnesota. It's but it's still cold, snowy and cold. So, yeah, I'm going to be definitely holed up in the house. So with a lot of people throughout this land. But God will see us. He'll see us as a nation getting together on our knees, turning from our wicked ways. We're not going to get this direction, guys, from the social media, <clears throat> from the presidency, who won, who didn't, from the news, from, from, from the church, from the pulpit. God, there's just so much lies and deception and hypocrisy going on. And, you know, this one's free, guys, okay? Think about this. Why do you need a stage? Why do you have to have a platform? On your knees, guys. What's God telling you? Really telling you? Love you guys. Talk to you soon.